this whole idea of annihilationism, uh, this concept that when you die, you cease to exist, that, well, God is, is too loving of a God to send anybody to an everlasting burning hell or a, a, you know, a furnace of fire or something like this where people are tormented. God's too loving for that sort of thing. So what he, what he does instead is he just, when you, if you're wicked or whatever, you just cease to exist. And this is a, a very popular idea. Not only is this idea popular among uh, religious cults, but even within uh, evangelical Christianity, there are some uh, big-name writers who have now gone over to this view. I think of people like, uh, uh, you may be familiar with a few of these, uh, I think F.F. F. Bruce uh, tilted that way, as well as John Stott. You may have heard of uh, some of these men uh, going over to this view. They didn't hold it before, but now they are, and there's been others that I think of Clark Pinnock, who at one point held to the traditional view of, uh, of hell, and now he's gone over to more of an annihilationist view. Uh, well, Bob, what we're going to do is go to another chart, which I'll uh, now bring up. And I want us to start discussing, from a biblical perspective, uh, this whole aspect of annihilationism. I think uh, this is a major hurdle that we have to deal with in order to get into the, the other attributes of God, or attributes of hell. Because if we don't deal with this, then a lot of people uh, have a tendency to slough off a lot of the clear and relevant passages. But if they don't have annihilationism to hold on to, then these other passages we'll bring up to, to describe hell in all its attributes, its awesome attributes, I think will hold water. And uh, so, uh, for the folks at home, let us, let us go to this chart. Uh, it's just simply entitled, A Refutation of Annihilationism, this idea that you cease to exist. That's a big word, Larry. Uh, why don't you kind of break it up and tell us what it means? Well, I, 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 so, I <laughs> sort of did for the folks at home. Annihilationism simply means there, it's the concept that you are annihilated, you are totally destroyed, you cease to exist. You go out of existence. You have no consciousness, consciousness of anything. You're like a dead dog thrown in a ditch. You know not anything. And in fact, I believe a lot of annihilationists, the soul sleepers, people that think you just go unconscious, they, they jump to places in Ecclesiastes, for instance, and just say you, you, you don't know anything, everything's just like it was, I guess, before you were born. And that's this whole idea of annihilationism. And now what we're going to try to do in the 20 minutes or so left to us is uh, see if the Bible goes along with this view or refutes this view. And then from there we can move in through this series into discussing more about all the other ramifications of hell. Well, Bob, first of all, on the, on the chart, we, we have a point here. It says the Bible talks about endless punishment. And we have a couple of references here. We have in Revelation 14, uh, verses 10 and 11. And we also have... Uh, Revelation uh, chapter 20 verse 10 and those passages of scripture and revelation talk about uh, I guess the concept of endless punishment could you uh, could you talk a little bit about this idea of end endless punishment uh, first of all Larry with regard to the men who have been uh, supportive of this view and uh, any uh, individuals as well as collection of individuals, churches or religions or denominations. I think we have a word that's been popularized in recent times that in a psychological sense would uh, uh, categorize these people and that word is what's called denial. There are many things in life that are tragedies, that are uh, circumstances, that are uh, things that we have done or do that we want to deny the existence of these things as a means of escape and as a means of avoiding the consequences of these things. And I think in the area of hell, we actually are dealing here, Larry, with a psychological reaction on the part of man to a biblical doctrine. And that psychological reaction is rooted in the fact that I don't think any of us are inherently desirous of seeing either ourselves or other people suffer. 
I don't think that any of us would want to think of one of our children, for example, one of our own family, as being deserving of hell, as it's described in the scriptures. And uh, I think that probably extends to other people as well. We do not desire bad things to happen to other people in general. I know every once in a while we have some distorted person that may be so deranged that he likes to see other people suffer. But generally speaking, uh, I think the human race has this tendency to want to other people in the human race to uh, be in good health and to enjoy life and not to suffer uh, consequences in life that would make things miserable for them and hurtful and uh, so on. Well, uh, but how are we going to deal with the fact that we do have these awful tragedies that come upon us? We have these horrible things that happen to people. Uh, they have uh, plane crashes, for instance, just in recent times, where the airplanes nosedive straight into the ground and the bodies just scattered the smithereens and we just shiver inside ourselves thinking about uh, the experience that must have been when this plane was diving to the ground. I guess actually that was more miserable to them than the actual crash itself. But uh, then we think of people I heard on the radio as I was traveling to the studio today about someone burning up in a house fire and how horrible that would be to burn up. And uh, we do, but we cannot deny the existence of these things or the reality of these well, things. Well, how can a loving God allow these things to happen? Well, that's that's the the thing that we also have to answer when we come to hell. Uh, why, how could God send people or allow people or whatever to go to hell? And uh, it's not to be determined by how we might feel about it, no more than the fact that if your house burns down, you're going to be suffering in the agonies of the fire as that house burns down. Uh, just because you don't like it and just because the idea is something that you reject as wanting in your life, it doesn't mean that the fire is going to stop burning and you're going to stop suffering. And uh, so just to uh, uh, take the element of human nature that rejects these things as being something you want to accept into your life willingly, just because you're, you're going to deny them, it doesn't mean that the reality is still not there. And hell is one of those things that we just have to face, just like we have to face uh, a child that's born deformed, just like we have to face an accident that's happened to someone who's deprived them of an arm or a leg or eyesight, just as a, a tragedy would happen that would uh, bring the end of one's death at the age of a very young, relatively young age. I've had this experience with one of my young infant children. You had an experience of this kind in your family where you've had a child that wasn't born uh, in a normal type physical uh, body and other people have had their tragedies. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. To see the full length video, please select by tapping on the first screen to the right. To see the entire playlist where this particular video is found, select by tapping on a touch screen on a cell phone or by clicking on a regular computer. The second screen to the right.